Hi everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. I hope you are doing extremely well. So guys, we are back with another problem in our NEET Code 150 DSC question series. So today's problem is longest consecutive sequence, right? So uh, as usual, first of all, we'll be dis discussing the problem statement, the logic part, and then we'll be having a look on the code part, right? So one thing I'm repeatedly getting in the comment section is regarding, uh, you know, to make a playlist about these videos. So guys, we're already having the playlist named as NEET Code 150 questions right so you can just check in the playlist sec section and i will provide in the description as well so you can check from there as well so make sure to solve the questions in the sequence right and uh, i mean in each thumbnail the number the sequence has been mentioned so you can just follow that so yeah that's it from my end let's start with the question now so the question says given an unsorted array of integers num return the length of the longest consecutive element sequence you must write an algorithm that runs in big of n time so we are having an unsorted array all right of integers named as nums and we have to return the length of longest consecutive element sequence i mean so what are the consecutive elements let's say we are having one two three four five so these are the consecutive elements so we have to similarly we have to return the length of the longest consecutive element sequence that can be formed from the given array and like what is the length so length basically we have to return so here if you will check the example one so nums in nums what are the values we are having 100 4 200 1 3 2 so here if you will check so 1 2 3 4 is forming uh, a sequence of consecutive elements right so they are forming a sequence of consecutive elements so the longest consecutive sequence elements here in this case is 1 2 3 4 and its length is 4 right so you can see here in the output that's what we are getting and in the next example uh, we are having what 0 3 7 2 5 8 4 6 0 1 right so for this one if i'm asking you so in the sequence in the sequence uh in the consecutive sequence what all the elements we can have 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 right so like that so what would be the length the length would be 9 and that's what we returned here you can see the uh, constraint as well right constraint has been provided so uh, what is the approach to solve this particular problem i mean the most basic one approach let's, let's think about it so what approach that uh, i mean many of you will be able to think of or that will come to your mind is that um like let's say pick one element I mean, we will be having an outer loop, obviously, for picking one element. So, let's pick one element. Let's say we have chosen, let's say, while, while treating the element, the current element that is under consideration is, let's say, 1, right? So, now, uh, we need the consecutive sequence thing, right? So, what we have to check is, we have to check for the next element that will occur post that. So, what is that? 2. So, we will check if 2 is there in our in our array or not. So, for that, what we will do? Obviously, we will do the linear searching thing. So, linearly, we will check if 2 is present in our array or not. So, 2 is present. So, now we will check for 3. 3 is present or not. So, 3 is also present. Then, we will check for 4. 4 is also present. And, like, while doing these steps, we will keep track of the count. Counter also, like, so that we can keep track. Okay, till now, what is the maximum length that we have encountered? Right? So, 4 also present and 5, 5 is not there. So, the maximum length we encountered is 4. And likewise, we will check for other elements also, right? And whatever would be the maximum length that will be returning. So, in that process, um, in that process, like we are uh, obviously iterating through the array and then we are just checking if the next of it exists in, in the array or not. Or, or likewise, we are just uh, calculating the length of the longest consecutive um, element sequence, right? So, what would be the time complexity of this approach that just now we discussed? Big O of n square. Big O of n square, right? So, now the question comes, can we do something better than that? Is there any other approach? Um, so, yes. Can sorting help us? Right? Sorting can help us, right? Because the elements will be sorted in a specific, in a, in a proper order. And this can help us in finding out the consecutive sequence. So, what we will do? As said. Let's say so we are having the array here. I have included some more ones just to explain you certain scenario. So post sorting, let's say this is the array that we have got, right? Post sorting, this is the array we have got. Right? So now uh so now that is for sure. That is for sure. Like, see if there is no element in our in our array, so obviously 
if the lumps length is zero so we will be happy to return zero itself so if just one element to, is there or like that is for sure that at least the mac at least the length would be one right so what we will do okay so uh, we will have a variable that will be responsible for keeping track of the or to store the maximum length so like one would be there so that is for sure and uh, what we can do so here if you will see we are having one 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 two three four one zero one so as of now the element under consideration is one let's 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 call it as the last i mean this the just seen element or you can you can say the last element that we have seen so that is uh nums of elemented nums of zero as of now right so yeah now array has been sorted everything been done already right so we will start execution so this element we have already stored in our last uh seen variable so we will start probably i'll do from i equal to one so we will check how you can say that the current element is in the consecution is the consecutive element of the previous one if the current element if from the current element we are subtracting one and we are getting the uh last seen element so we can we can conclude so right like you you are you are you must be getting my point right so that's that that's how it is so we will check we will check that if nums of i nums of i here here just parallelly we can have a look on the code part itself also so nums of i minus nums of i is what one right one minus one is zero equal equal to that of last last is what last is one like here let me write last is one no right so this condition is not true okay okay so uh, see so yeah now next thing is next this this part i will explain you as of now if i'll explain so you won't be able to get it so the thing is like if see if the elements are similar like in this case they are they are equal they are similar so we don't have to do anything like we don't have to do anything this is what it actually means because this condition we have written for the case when the consecutive elements are there then only this um, uh, condition would be true right so again we will proceed further so for this also we will check and like none of these conditions will be true right then comes this element 2 so in case of 2 in case of 2 um, this condition will be true because uh, nums of i is 2 2 minus 1 we will get 1 and that is equal equal to that of 1 so c value c is responsible for like counting purpose and max basically so the maximum count maximum length that we have got so c value is initially 1 because we know at least one element would be there right at least one length would be there let's see value would be updated to 2 because 1 2 we have seen right so uh, it would be updated to 2 and the last seen element would be now updated because now last seen element is now been updated to 2 because 2 is the element that we have lastly seen now 2 then we will see 3 so 3 minus 1 equal equal to condition is uh, true right so count would be updated to 3 and the last seen element would be updated to 3 now here again 4 4 minus 1 equal equal to 3 that condition is also true right so now what would happen that last seen element is 4 and count plus plus will happen so that would be also 4 right so yeah now comes the next element that is 101 now in that scenario so see 101 101 Obviously, one zero one minus one is not is not going to be equal to last, right? Because this is a new sequence itself getting started. There is no consecution involved. So, and this condition is also not going to be true. See, when the elements are same, for example, here here one one was there, right? So this condition would be. Uh, so, like for for the similar case, we don't need anything. Like we we don't need any operation or something like it. But when the sequence itself is getting changed, see, so from here. This new sequence is uh, there one zero one one zero two one zero three one zero four one zero five, right? So, in that scenario, what we have to do? Because the consecution is not there, and new element itself we are we are just having a look on. So, what we have to do? Uh, the thing is, what we should do? We should set the count back to its original. I mean, uh, whatever the original value was. So, we have to uh, update the value of count to one. And nums and last value is nums of i because from here new sequence is getting started. From here new sequence is getting started, right? So that's what we are checking that if nums of i is not equal to last. 
so when the elements are similar then this condition is not going to be true right one not equal to one obviously that would be false so it it won't work for that so when here as of uh, now nums of i is not 101 101 is not equal to 4 right so this condition is true so the this is a new sequence getting started so the value of c would be updated to 1 and last would be updated to nums of i right and here in this in this loop itself we are we are updating like this is responsible for having the maximum the longest uh, the length of the longest consecutive element so max equal to math dot max and the counter c uh, comma max right so yep that is that is how it is and like likewise it will continue further like for 102 102 minus 1 uh, this condition will be true to count value like it has been updated to one right so it would be updated to two and likewise it will happen so yeah i hope you got this you got this logic right how we are doing and the code part as well because in parallel we discussed both the things that how we are using the sorting thing here so now if, if we will talk about the time complexity of this particular approach so here we are see we are not using any extra auxiliary space so auxiliary space would be big of one but yeah, um, we are here. Here we are sorting the array, right? So for the, so what was the, what is the time complexity of sorting? So that is big of n log n, right? So that would be the time complexity for this particular approach. But here they are asking that you have to write an algorithm that runs in big of n. So if we can do, if we can do something better than that, so we will, we will now discuss about the optimized approach to solve this particular problem, right? So yeah, that's what that's what it is. That's what it is. Okay. So now we will take the help of set to solve our problem. Or you can use hash map as well. It's it's up to you, right? As of now, here I mentioned set. Right. So first what we will do in our set, in our set, we will keep all the elements that we have seen. So uh 100, 4, 200, 1, 3, 2, all the elements we will keep in the set that we have seen. Right, we will just add them in the set now max value uh again the same thing right the, this variable would be responsible for this would be responsible to return the length of the longest consecutive elements and it uh this value we are going to initialize with one so int max equal to one right so that is how it is now what we have to do is that what we will do we are we are we are having our set ready right so we will start going through the elements that are there in the there in the set so what we will do so we are having 100 4 200 1 3 2 so see when here here what we basically we will try to find out we will try to find out the starting point of a sequence so whenever a sequence being started so so let's say let's say we have seen 4 so if 3 is there if 3 is there so we cannot say that 4 is the starting point right now we we have seen 3 so if 2 is there sorry if 2 is there if 2 is there we cannot see we cannot say that 2 is the starting point if 1 is there so we cannot say 2 is the starting point right now post that like if you further reduce the reduce the value by one so zero zero is not there so we we will say that yes one is the starting point of a sequence for sure right for sure one is the starting point of a sequence similarly for here if you will check so 99 is not, not there so we can say 100 is the starting point of a sequence likewise for 200 right so that's what we are we are just checking here that if not our set contains x minus 1 means that particular x that particular element is a starting point of the sequence so once we have got the starting point once you got the starting point let's say you got 1 right you got 1 so 1 is the starting point so next thing is again just to we got the starting point right so now we can easily just check okay, what all the elements we are having in addition to it means 1 is there so we have to check just uh plus one plus one plus one plus one like what all the elements are there and we have to keep track of of the length right so that's what we are doing here is that uh, if this condition became true means we got the element which is a starting point of a particular sequence so int y equal to one and this le is having us the current element so what is the current element one one right so now in our set we are checking if le plus one is there so le element is what element is 1 so 1 plus 1 2 is there 
right uh, our set contains 2 so we will uh, we we will increment y y plus 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 y plus plus and element plus plus right so y value would be what y value would be 2 then we will check uh, an element value was uh, been updated to right then we will check for 3 so 3 is also there so element uh, 3 is also there so y value would be updated to 3 and similarly we will check for uh, again plus 1 we will do so 4 4 is also there so y value would be updated to 4 then we will check for 5 so 5 is not there in the set so we will come out of this while loop and this is the uh, length right this the length of the consecutive sequence that we have seen so we will keep track of it so here in the max we will store whatever is the maximum value if the value in the max or the value of the y so just store this in the max right so right so likewise likewise we have to do like we, we will continue in our set and we will keep on checking for the other um, starting points that we will get and at the end the max will be storing the the length of the longest consecutive element sequence and that would be returned right so so yeah that is the optimized approach to solve this particular problem if talking about the time complexity of this one so here uh, first of all we are using this extra space for sure right so that is being involved so big of n is the space complexity and now here if you will uh, talk about this right so overall overall don't this won't be taken as a big of n like don't think this would be taken as a big of n like if you will check for all the iterations right so approx approx it would be a big of 2n itself right so overall if, if we are talking about the time complexity uh, is it, it is big of n for this particular approach so time and space complexity we discussed so this is the approach that you can use and again as i said that you can use hash map also um, instead of set to achieve your task right so yeah, uh, I hope that you were able to understand it and if there is any feedback regarding the explanation or something, feel free to let me know in the comment section so that even I just want to improve. I mean, if there is anything, um, just let me know in the comment section. But yeah, let, let's not mention about the language that let's code in this specific language or that specific language because my concern is that like if you are if you are once clear with the logic right so just focus on the logic once clear with the logic then you can code in any programming language so focus on understanding the logic part and then whichever language you are comfortable with you can code so yeah that's it from my side thank you so much for watching everyone bye bye